my friend, Tom Rick, and this is your seat at the table. I got little Missy sitting over here in the corner looking utterly bored with me. And I promised her I want to go one more video. I just want to do one more video. I just want to do one more video. We are looking at Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition Forgotten Realms, the Adventures book by Job, Jeff Grubb and Ed Greenwood. The colossal addition to the Forgotten Realms campaign setting updates from the popular fantasy world and makes it fully compatible with 2nd Edition AD&D &D rules. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. The coming of the avatars and the time of troubles caused tremendous changes in the Forgotten Realms. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So, I bought this book uh, for $20 in... What the hell? Where's the year at? Come on, come on. Where's the year? Where's the year? Anytime I, you know, any other time you just stumble across it, and other times it's like pulling teeth. 1990, all right? So we have the Forgotten Realms post-Avatar. Now, if you don't know what Avatar, the Avatar was a, it was a series of novels that came out, uh, and and some were interlinked and some weren't, but the, the, the game creators at the time decided to, uh, that the world needed a good shakeup. So they come up with this, uh, this conflict in the heavens. A bunch of gods got in trouble. Some of them died. A number of them were kicked out of heaven, and, they, and, and then there was this mad dash to, uh, for their Avatar to, to re-enter heaven and re-establish their, their, their place in the, in the heavens uh, and, uh, or perish permanently by, by being replaced by other people who were savvy enough to figure out how to become a god. And that's basically set up for a whole lot of stuff. And I had mixed opinions of it at the, at the time when it came out because some of the stuff was just total, it was a total money grab, it's my mind, but then, you know, it, it, you got to do what you got to do. We introdu introduced things like uh, dead magic areas and wild magic and wild magic regions and things like this. So Forgotten Realms post uh, you know, psionics, proficiencies. Races and limitations, physical changes to the realms. That was another thing. There's such a catastrophic event that literal physical changes took place on certain elements around the world too, uh, which added to the flavor in many ways and cheesed a lot of us off in many ways, which is typical of players everywhere. So chapter two, gods and their specialty priests. So we got a whole slew of them. And chapter three, magic and mages in the realms, schools of magic and their sons, so on and so forth. Chapter 4 is Cities of the Heartlands. Chapter 5 is Secret Societies. Chapter 6 is Treasure. Right? So basically an overview of the Forgotten Realms itself, a bunch of nifty things to add, uh, some little caveats of things that may or may not have changed for Paladins, Rangers, Cavaliers, Barbarians, Wizards, Priests, Sora, Rogues, Assassins, Bards, Thief, Acrobats, Monks, Fire. Multi-class characters, and we talk about psionics, proficiency. It was about this era that psionics were starting to really take off uh, in popularity. More and more people were becoming aware of it, in part because of a couple of a couple really uh, interesting characters that showed up in some Drizzt du Arden uh, uh, novels. Uh, members of Brigand the Earth. Uh, this, the number two leader of Brigand the Earth, if I remember right, was a psionicist. And it was because of characters like him that people started really opening their minds. Ha 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 Physical chaos and abominations, new weapons, and the introduction of firearms into those into the realms. So we see a little bit more uh, things like uh, the musket, the blunderbuss, the arquebus, the bombard, the star wheel, the ribald, and the cavalier. All were firearms of some sort. And you get a whole a uh, whole nice little sub chapter on them. Gods and their specialty priests. I'm not even gonna try to go through that. I mean, there's like 20, 15 pages of this stuff, right? Magic signals in the, in the realms, some uh, magic and uh, mages for the realms, spells, catapult, corpse light, no spell, scatter spray, snillix snowball, agonizer scorcher, blade thirst, cloak from the undead, cloaked undead, deca stave, flying fist, gulp pipes, quimby's enchanting gorm uh, gourmet, right? Undead mount. Yeah, so 
Lots of nice ones in there. Some new, some not so new. Kelvin's Warding Whip. The Deathlink Gateway. The symbol Sicko Snuffs the Snowper Sneaks the Weemer. For the love of God, don't ask me to pronounce that. Alright, I just, I, you just heard me butcher trying it. Yeah, yeah. So, I like this book. Uh, it, it served a lot of use. I found it uh, a quick reference guide for things like uh, cities around the, the heartlands for uh, for, for uh, forgotten realms and uh, quick references to them. I mean, you weren't going to spend a lot of time there, or you just needed a brief uh, blob. You could grab the book and you know, bing, bang, boom, there you go. And I always like I always like this sort of source book. I really have. I do. All right. Semi precious stones. Old chapter on on stones and gemstones and things like that. What makes gemstones so damn? See ornament. I said gems or um, ornamental stones. And we get all kinds of uh, breakdowns and descriptions of them. Semi precious stones. Fancy stones. Precious stones. Gemstone. Jewel. Hard stones. Art objects. Shells. Early shells can be treasure too. Right? There you go. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this this one here, like I said, I kind of quite a bit of use out of it off and on back in the day. Uh, mostly when we were running adventures in and around the Forgotten Realms. Uh, there was probably better part of 20 years uh, most of my dungeon dragons uh, it was split up between creation running campaigns and settings of my own creation usually by tapping judges guild material uh, because I was fond of it or we were tapping uh, the middle earth uh, merp and using the D&D rules uh, instead so we but we were playing in merp and uh, uh, but for Dungeons and Dragons, it's a general uh, Forgotten Realms settings my go-to for a long, long time. Uh, after it, uh, it started to supplement, I had uh, oh yeah, way back, way back in the day, uh, I had uh, great uh, not Grace Call, damn it. I had uh, Greyhawk, uh, the Greyhawk campaigning setting, and we used that quite a bit in my very younger days. And then Forgotten Realms started showing up, and the and the novels really got me interested, and and so I I gave I just could this become my thing. About the same time that Dragonlance came out, and I had some friends that really liked Dragonlance, but they they didn't put out nearly enough. The Dragonlance material for the games very thin, not very much of it compared to Dungeons and Dragons for Forgotten Realms, for example, I got a pile of stuff. And you expect for the next year for me to work my way through the modules and the other remaining stuff for second edition for, for, for Forgotten Realms in a nutshell. Great book. If you can get if you can find it and it's cheap, it's worth having. It's worth it's a great addition to uh, your table if in and if, even if you don't play in the Forgotten Realms uh, uh, setting, there's a lot of good information in there that could be utilized in other game systems. That's just my opinion anyway. Till next time, I'm Rick, you're not.